All right, all right, all right. Hey, YouTube, I'm Lucky, and in today's video, I'm going to give you an entire guide to doing the Grand Masters that are coming up this week, all right? You are going to want to do these because the loot from these is actually really, really good. They're going to give you adept weapons. So similarly to Trials, when you go flawless, you get adept weapons. Now when you beat the Grand Masters, the toughest activity in the PvE side, you get adept weapons as well too. So this first week, it's shaping up to be like the machine gun. It could be the auto rifle or the hand cannon though, but it's probably the machine gun this week. But it's still a very good time to test yourself. Make sure you have what it takes in order to take on one of the hardest challenges in Destiny 2. And I'm here to give you the full guide for yourself and for your entire team so that way you can beat it pretty effortlessly. If you don't know, I'm actually a Grandmaster connoisseur of sorts. I've beaten it hundreds and hundreds of times and actually do Grandmaster carries. When it comes to PvP, I love Trials, the endgame content. And when it comes to PvE, I absolutely love these Grandmasters, all right? So the first thing you need to know is that your level actually needs to be 1325. If you're not 1325 for whatever reason, including your gear score plus your artifact, you're not going to be able to get into the activity. So that's the first, you know, sort of barrier that you're going to have to get past. Like right here, I'm 1324. If you're 1324, you're one level away, you're not going to be able to do the activity. It literally won't let you launch the activity. It's not that people won't play with you. It's that you literally cannot get into the activity unless you're 1325. Now, if you're 1350 power, if you're an absolute crackhead and you've got your artifact way up high, that doesn't matter either because they bring your level down to 1325. So it's the same challenge across the board for everyone that plays the activity. Now, that being said, the subclass that I'm going to go in with is probably going to be Titan, depending upon my team chemistry, of course. And if I do, I'm going to use Ursa Furiosa. The chest piece, the cure ass of the Falling Star with the Missile Titan is really, really strong. I'm not knocking it at all. And it might be very well the best choice to make for this. But when it comes to these Grandmasters, you really want to focus on survivability first. And once you get a rhythm down, once you've beaten the Grandmaster multiple times, then you can start going for a little bit of speed and trying to beat it you know faster but at first it's all about survivability especially if it's a new strike we don't know how many champions there are when the champions come around the corner how to engage them etc so survivability first and i'm going to use sentinel middle tree sentinel magnetic grenade towering barricade catapult lift and then the ursa furiosa now what i'm going to try to do with this is i'm chaining my supers with the ursas to the well of radiance warlock that's going to be on my team and we're going to go back and forth essentially chaining supers he's going to have uh, phoenix protocol on which is the chest piece that's going to give him a, a ton of super energy back for getting kills inside his well of radiance and then from that he'll drop orbs and etc 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 i'll chain orbs with ursa furiosa so that's the sort of synergy between me and the warlock and the team the third character i like to do a trifecta build when i do the first nightfall uh grandmaster that is and i like to do one titan one warlock and one hunter the hunter will probably rock aeons because those aeons are really really good probably do a bunch of finishers and get us a bunch of power ammo. We'll see how that build goes for now. But for now, I'm going to cover the Titan build on myself. Uh, for my kinetic slot, I'm either going to use Long Shadow or Izanagi's Burden. The Sniper being in the kinetic slot is definitely the best way to go because if there are shields, you're going to want to break them. For myself personally, I'm going to use a Pulse Rifle most likely. And what I've got here is I've got three different Pulse Rifles that I use depending upon what shields I'm trying to break throughout the strike. So if there's a lot of Void Shields, I'll use the Last Perdition. Arc Shields, I'll use the GN7, and Solar Shields, I'll use the Stars and Shadow. And I'll just rotate around depending upon uh, what shields there are in the respective strike. The same thing with my Power Ammo, I'll use this Tomorrow's Answer. Unfortunately, I didn't get that Lasting Impression roll with Auto Loading, but I got Auto Loading Cluster. So if there's Void Shields, I'll use this. If there's Solar Shields, I'll use this, Auto Loading Cluster, Code Dweller. And if there's Arc, I'll use this, Auto Loading and Vorpal on the Sleepless. So I'll kind of rotate back and forth depending upon what the shields are within the strike. So that's the first thing you want to cover is making sure you have those shields and having good synergy within your teammates. You know, if your one teammate has Void, you should use Arc and then your third teammate use Solar. That way, no matter what shields there are, you can cover it all. And obviously, if you know what shields there are in the strike, then you can sort of spec things out a little bit better after you've beaten a few times. But initially, this is just a really good overall build and how you'll successfully beat Grandmasters in general. So that's my weaponry and that's how my subclass is built in terms of the artifact this anti-barrier is definitely the way and that's why we're putting on that uh, sniper for sure instead of the slug shotgun it's going to be better for you than the scout both are great ranged weapons though so there's no problem with using i guess both but what i like to do for my team builds is i like to give every single person on the team all of the champion mods to stop all the different champions so that way there's complete overlap and we can stomp any champions what sometimes people do when they're more confident is they'll put like one guy will have all the anti-barrier or maybe he'll have anti-barrier and unstoppable but he doesn't have the overload for example and then what happens is if someone dies or if the guy who's supposed to get that champion dies then you're really really stuck and you're sunk and i don't like that feeling i don't like getting screwed over when the proper person dies who's supposed to stun that respective champion it really sucks in grandmasters and it happens more often than you think so what i like to do is have every single person have every single champion stun mod on in some respective way for example the, the solar warlock can run this so that way they can have unstoppables taken care of and then they can run anti-barrier 
and then they can run overload SMG. So they'll basically spec themselves out so that way they can cover all three areas as much as possible. Of course, it depends on the subclass you're using. If you can cover all three areas, that's definitely the best way to do it uh, when doing these Grandmasters. So keep that in mind as I go over my builds. Now, I want you also to understand that when it comes to uh, my, my armor mods, there's almost no wasted energy here. I'm very, very particular about how I do things, and I want to make sure that I get the most out of every single piece. So starting from the helmet, we've got Protective Light, and this is going to be one of the best mods for these Grand Masters in terms of survivability. And what we're going to want to do is stack with this, stacks on stacks, so that way we can get a ton of charge with light, so that way we can survive some of those nasty onslaughts from even just the red bar enemies. They can almost one-shot you. Protective Light will keep you alive, though. Grenade Launcher, Ammo Finder, and Sniper Rifle Ammo Finder. I'll probably put this to Rocket Launcher Ammo Finder, so I didn't need to adjust that. Um, and then after I get that, so we'll put that right there, boom. And then I've just got a little resilience mod because that's all I could fit in there. Moving on down to the gauntlet, I've got the anti-barrier sniper and the unstoppable pulse rifle. So I've got both of these two champions covered respectively. And then with this, I got taking charge by picking up an orb of light. I can get charged with light. And then going down to the chest piece, this is really important. We've got stacks on stacks to get, uh, gain an extra stack of charge with light for every stack you gain. And then this one's really important. Concussive dampener is really effective in the game. And sniper damage resistance is very important because those snipers, they just see you across the map and they hit you in the head and you're done. So sniper damage resist combined with uh, some serious uh, protective light will do, do you some good work there. So then on the chest piece, the last one I have is I just I slotted in a recovery mod because I could fit it in there. You know, when it comes to these mods, make sure you're, you're prioritizing. In PvP, you prioritize this slot first, generally. And in PvE, you tend to prioritize this slot first. It almost works conversely, but uh, that's the way it tends to work on these armor pieces. I've got supercharged here. Uh, you can gain two additional stacks of charge with light up to a maximum of five. So that really helps me get up high numbers in those charge with light. And then we've got grenade launcher scavenger and sniper rifle scavenger. Again, I'll put this to uh, rocket launcher scavenger because I'm not using the anarchy. Initially, I was thinking I might use the anarchy and I still might. If I, if I rock the long shadow, I'll probably throw on the anarchy instead of one of those rockets. But I wanted to give you guys a build with the rocket launchers because... Those are the meta right now, and uh, it's kind of fun to use something different than the Anarchy, which I've just used for so very long now. So now we got that. I put in this Minor Resilience mod. Use the Sniper Scavenger from the Artifact. And then down to the last one, we have Shield Break Charge. Become Charged with Light by breaking Combatant Shield with the matching energy type. So this will be important to have, you know, all of your teammates, you know, take out the respective shields. So if there's Solar Shields, I'll put on that Solar Pulse Rifle instead. I'll put on the Stars and Shadow, and I'll break those shields, and I'll get charged with Light. And that way I have that Protective Light if one of those Snipers shoots me across the map, etc. And so all of these mods are really important. I'm using Shield Break, Supercharged, Stacks on Stacks, Taking Charge, and Protective Light. So basically, it's entirely focused around that Protective Light and trying to get as much Charge with Light as I possibly can. My build in terms of stats is we've got 100 Recovery. 3 Resilience is a little low, but Resilience doesn't seem to make as much of an impact. It only gives you a very minimal amount of HP. And in these Grand Masters, one little red bar does so much damage that it doesn't seem to matter that much. So keep that in mind. Really, the only important stat with these Grandmasters is definitely have 100 recovery. You want to get your health back as fast as possible so you can get back in the action. And that's my overall build. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section below. And if you want to come watch me, I'll be live streaming it. The link to my live stream will be down below. And best of luck to you out there grinding the Grandmasters. I hope you get that Adept loot. And even though it's probably not the Palindrome this first week, you should definitely get in there. If you are 1325, get some practice in and get ready because when that Palindrome week comes, you're going to want to be ready and well-practiced because these Grandmasters are no walk in the park. They're very, very tough. That's a wrap for this video. Make sure to subscribe with notifications on if you did enjoy. Smash the like button and I'll see you in the next video. Later.